It's been a good two years since we did the Immersive Sim tier list, and in that time, there's been enough new Immersive Sims to warrant a whole new list. This is gonna get some, uh, interesting comments, isn't it? Just to keep things interesting, I've made it a point to reevaluate all the older immersive sims, as well as make it a point to include games that are not immersive sims, but some people will assert they are anyway, and also games that are kind of borderline immersive sims in respectively named categories for the sake of being as thorough as possible. As a point of reference, the old list had 25 games in it. This list has over 60. To keep my sanity, I've abandoned the custom-made photoshops I did before and just used the same website as everyone else does. Uh, I really have no idea why I wasn't doing that in the first place. Before we get into that though, let's take a sec to establish some ground rules here. I think setting some expectations will do us all much better than some ad read. First rule for this list, in order to be tiered here, the games must be a standalone, complete title. That means no DLCs that add in sim mechanics, no early access, no mods, total conversion, or otherwise. In the end, we will go over a few EA titles that are uh, honorable mentions, but in order to rank a game properly, it needs to be completed. It's just not fair to give a full judgment on what might be half a game. Second rule, if it's not on this list, assume it's not an immersive sim. While there are some cases where I admit I just don't know enough about a game to or a series to make that call, primarily the Hitman series. Other than that, I was pretty exhaustive in trying to include every possible game that people might consider an immersive sim, regardless of how well-founded their claims are. And that's why this list is nearly three times the size of the last one. Third rule, um, I need a third rule to round this out. Um, just be cool, okay? I know some of you got very upset and rather belligerent in the last one, and you're totally allowed to be upset. Just if you're gonna disagree with something, help me help you you by actually explaining why and not just being upset. Welcome to the 90s. Here's where we're gonna start, and while last time it wasn't, thanks to the post-lockdown explosion of M-Sims, we've recently seen the inaugural period of immersive sims now being the period with the least number of games to tier, even if we shave off all the not immersive sims and borderlines from the other categories. Don't get the wrong idea though. There are still some monster M-Sims that stay on the top of the rankings from back in the day. First is the original immersive sim. Z Ultima Underworld 1 and 2. These are C tier, as the first one is very rudimentary and was literally establishing the genre, subgenre, and niche, whatever you call M Sims. So a lot of stuff wasn't hammered out yet, and the second one kind of lost its direction. If you're interested in these, GOG has versions of them that should run fine on modern operating systems. Next up, System Shock in the A tier. In the last video, this was C tier, but after playing the Enhanced Edition and realizing there's no reason not to play the best possible version of a game whenever applicable, I really have been able to appreciate all the stuff OG System Shock does. It only takes maybe half an hour of playing to really learn the archaic control steam, and it's also heavily streamlined to be a little more creature comforty in the Enhanced Edition, so it's definitely worth the trouble. Next on our list is the first not immersive sim, Strife. And also, even though I didn't put them here, uh, just add like Hexen and other games like that to the not immersive sim category. And just to make it clear, adding some RPG elements to your boomer shooter does not make it an immersive sim. And now we enter the realm of fully 3D games with Thief, the Dark Project, C tier. The first Thief game is a rather dull affair with some missions in it that are frankly obnoxious with their level of time wasting, and also how this is where we first saw the tradition of massive saves coming to do anything in stealth. I know the Thief heads are gonna be mad, but remember I'm the charlatan wonder, not the pander to your every opinion so you never feel uncomfy wonder. System Shock 2, S tier. This is the way it's done. System Shock 2 is by far the best immersive sim out of the 90s and laid the foundation for countless immersive sims and other games to come after it. Night Dive is currently working on an enhanced edition that'll play nice out of the box, but if you get the original version off GOG, it works just fine. Play this if you somehow haven't already. And finally, to wrap up the 90s, we have Half-Life. Not an immersive sim. I see this argued for the second game mostly, but just to be thorough, I put this in here too. Side note though, Valve just updated Half-Life for its 25th anniversary, and I'm gonna be all over that in just a sec once I'm done with this video. Just because something isn't an immersive sim doesn't mean it can't be a great game. Welcome to the 2000s, or as I call them, the age of the yik. A lot of stuff popped off during the turn of the century, and immersive sims were no exception. 
It's also around this time we saw a lot of spiritual successors to immersive sims rise to prominence with great effect. This was also when mixing RPG elements into first person action games was still kind of unique and we won't run into the issue of assuming their favorite RPG is an immersive sim. Uh, too much anyway. First up for the yik times is Thief 2, The Metal Age. B tier. Thief 2 improves on most of the things Thief the First did and is a pretty good time overall but not nearly as good as the A rank or S rank games on this list. Speaking of S ranks, Deus Ex. Deus Ex is arguably the immersive sim. Many have tried to emulate what it did and very few have succeeded, including sequels and prequels to this game. Morrowind, not an immersive sim. In fact, let's just take the time now and put all the Bethesda RPGs into the not immersive sim category. They're RPGs. There's a clear difference between exploits, something frequently found in a Bethesda RPG, such as potion abuse or making a crapload of iron daggers to power level in Skyrim, and the emergent gameplay found in an immersive sim, such as kicking down a support beam to cause a bunch of stuff to fall on a group of bad guys, negating your need to fight them. I think this is the big issue with lots of folks trying to assert Bethesda RPGs are immersive sims in that they can't discern like exploit from emergent gameplay. Now back to actual immersive sims with Arx Fatalis. C tier. You know what? No, B tier. I'm bumping it up because while it's rough around the edges and some stuff Arcane did with its first game didn't quite work out how they hoped, Arcane is still supporting this game and it's playable today. A commendable effort in this day and age. And now for a huge letdown. Deus Ex Invisible War, D tier, and that is generous. Invisible War was a direct sequel to Deus Ex and really drew out the ball in a lot of ways. The consolification of the UI and controls hindering the experience, a predictable story, and they also just couldn't decide on which ending to the last game was canon, so they just awkwardly mashed all the endings together to satisfy no one. Also, it does this weird instancing stuff, which makes it a pain to record. Thief Deadly Shadows, C tier. I'm not gonna get into it much more as I know no matter what I say or how I rank this game, the thief heads are gonna be sad. Half-Life 2, not an immersive sim. It's got a lot of cool, groundbreaking stuff in it, like the physics engine that was insane at the time, but you gotta color within Gaben's lines at all times. And now for the inaugural borderline game, VTMB. While Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines doesn't have all the stuff to make it an M-Sim, it's a master of RPG storytelling and kitchen sink design. It's a shame the game came out in such a state that it did, but people have been working to fan patch this game for longer than some people that watch my channel have been alive. It's worth a play if you get it on GOG, which has that fan patch baked in. Dark Messiah, Heroes of Might and Magic. Arcane's second game has some so silly they're great kicking mechanics, but is ultimately D tier as not much else is fleshed out and the game blatantly falls apart about three quarters of the way in, with the devs even admitting that they were out of time so they just slapped a bunch of spiky walls for you to kick people into everywhere. At least it helped inspire Sorceress, which got funded by the way, great job everyone. Bioshock, the game of the sixth console generation. Uh, the only possible contender is like Halo, but you get what I'm saying here. But it's only on the borderline. Unfortunately, this is the closest post-system shock games will get to being an M-Sim. Now for another borderline, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl. While well, SOC does lots with using artifacts to make some really wild builds possible, ultimately all objectives are solved by shooting at the bad guy until they fall down. Not very M-Sim, but an effort was made, so we're giving it the borderline. Clear Sky, not an M-Sim, and in my opinion, the worst of the Stalker trilogy. It just leans too hard into linear shooting for the latter half of the game to be fun. Alone in the Dark 2008, I just spent 90 minutes explaining why this disaster of a game is not an M-Sim. You know, we've been going for a bit now. Uh, let's take a break to do a nice little cooking segment and then we'll wrap up the last two decades and our, um, I guess best and worst. I want to say like honorific and whatever the opposite of honorific is, but I know do brain good. Time for a cooking segment. We're gonna do some French bread pizzas today because they're cool and I like them. There's no real story to this outside some weeks I have a surplus of bread left over from this week's bake and rather than toss it out, I make them into pizzas. You're gonna wanna do this on bread that's been out for a while. It's no mistake that I wait until right around the time I'm gonna bake my next batch of sandwich rolls because if anything, the bread being a little bit stale and firmer is gonna help us a lot with keeping everything together and piling on those toppings. Now you're gonna wanna cut this right down the middle like you 
you would for a sandwich. Be careful doing this though, because if you're not used to this, I'd highly recommend getting a chainmail glove or something because I actually got careless the other day myself and sliced my finger open. But luckily it wasn't so deep I needed stitches or anything. It just hurt like hell. Start preheating your oven to 400 freedom heat units and let's set up our toppings. As for the toppings, it's uh, really easy. The only labor intensive thing we're gonna do here is grate our cheeses. We've got mozzarella and some Parmesan and then cook a couple things that need to be cooked. For reference, I'm just making some plain old pepperoni for myself and some chicken, pineapple and bacon for my wife. If you get weird about pineapple on pizza, I suggest you go back to 2012 when that was still a fun meme. Once all the cheese is grated, we're gonna take the time to fry up the bacon in a pan first as the leftover grease from the bacon will be a great starter for the chicken breast. Remember to cook the bacon less than you prefer to be done as it's going to cook a good deal more in the oven with the rest of the pizza. As for the chicken breast, remember to butterfly them or cut them right down the middle into two so that they cook easier in the pan without getting overly rubbery. Once the bacon's done, go ahead and remove it to a wire rack to drain and then cook the chicken on the drippings. I actually did something really cool here by sheer happenstance and cooked enough chicken breast to run out of bacon grease, so I used avocado oil for the second batch. You can see the difference in color and texture between the chicken cooked and the low smoke point bacon grease, which while very flavorful doesn't offer much in even cooking because it smokes off very fast, versus the avocado oil, which while milder has a very high smoke point, meaning the heat is much better distributed on the chicken. I just thought this was a neat little thing. Thing. Once your chicken's done, give it a few minutes to rest while you chop up that bacon and then cut the chicken into small, bite-sized pieces. Okay, let's assemble and serve this thing. Take your half sandwich rolls and ladle on the marinara before just using a butter knife to evenly spread your marinara or whatever sauce you want to use across the bread. Now, time to be very, very generous with your cheese. Seriously, it's, uh, we don't have to worry about the dough here. Now for the pepperoni, just layer on those pepperonis onto the bread and then maybe a bit more. And as for the chicken pineapple bacon, we do it in the order of naming here. First we put on a whole lot of chicken, then we drain the can of pineapples and put all the chugs into the available spaces between the chicken, and finally we cover the whole things in bacon squares. Since we're not using a thin uncooked pizza crust, but instead a thick hunk of bread, we can get away with piling these toppings very high. Finally, take your parmesan if you've got it handy and sprinkle a healthy layer over the top of everything, which will help keep the toppings on the bread. Finally, toss those suckers into your preheated oven on a parchment lined baking sheet tray for 15 minutes. Now, once you pull them out, what I like to do is take this big old slicer I got when my old pizza cutter went boom last year during Halloween in July and cut the pizza short ways. This is gonna get you some pretty awesome cheese pulls for each slice we've made here. What's even better? Thanks to this convenient shape, these are perfect for dipping in marinara sauce or ranch or whatever you like to dip your pizza in. Now, Let's get back to that tier list now that we've made some dinner. Welcome to the 2010s. This was the decade where the clowns started appearing out of the forest. Smokey the Bear may have secretly been an operative for the clowns this whole time. Also, we got a cool batch of immersive sims, including some of the best ever made. This chapter is going to have the most games in it, but not the most immersive sims. It's around this point that so many things that made M Sims unique became adopted by most mainstream games in a way that improved those games, but didn't really follow the immersive sim tenets. The way I like to put it is that just because the menu at Chili's features steaks does not mean that Chili's is a steakhouse, you get me? First game of the 2010s, Bioshock 2. Not an immersive sim. Bioshock sequel dialed into the shooting mechanics in a way that took out what little immersion gameplay Bioshock had, and now the only real similarity between this and System Shock 2 is the word shock in their names. Stalker, Call of Pripyat. A great game and personally my favorite of the trilogy, but not an immersive sim. Fallout New Vegas. I'm setting this aside from the other Bethesda RPGs. While yes, this is technically a Bethesda RPG, it is not directly made by Bethesda. FMV is not an immersive sim. Yes, there are multiple ways you can do some, keyword some tasks, but you must always color inside of Obsidian's lines. I, Divine Cybermancy, D tier. I wish I could rank it higher, but there's just too much jank for me to recommend this to the normies. Trying to play and learn I is a serious commitment and your survival is not guaranteed. Deus Ex, Human Revolution, A tier. This is possibly the best you can do as far as trying to reboot a series. Sure, it's never gonna live up to the original game, but it's still amazing. Dishonored, A tier. It's like Thief, but I like it. The abilities are great. The gameplay is a lot of fun. It would be higher up, but the morality system throws a wet blanket on things. Bioshock Infinite, new tier. 
How dare you? The fourth, the first game that goes into the Ultra Doo Doo tier. Don't pretend you like this game or think that it deserves better. Alien Isolation, not an immersive sim. We went over this in a video during Halloween in July. Metal Gear Solid 5, also not an immersive sim. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, S tier. Even with this game being hamstrung by Squeenix, it is still a straight up upgrade from the last game, which was already very, very good. However, Dishonored 2 is a downgrade to B tier. As while some of the levels are the best around in any game, the game gets lost in the weeds with an overlong hub world sections and not being able to commit to the new character. Typhon, also known as Prey 2017, S tier. One of the best around, arguably the true successor to System Shock 2. Yes, I know the load times are long if you're living in 2017 and still using an HD, but this and the DLC Moon Crash are some of the best immersive sims have to offer. We Happy Few, Borderline. Not quite there, but an effort was made. Underworld Ascendant, Ultra Doo Doo Tier. This game has no redeeming qualities and isn't even finished. Well, it's not finished to a state that most people would consider polished enough to be finished, but they call it finished anyway. I made a video on this a while back where we go over how even if you have all the elements of an immersive sim, that doesn't automatically mean your game is good. All right, this is going to be the first and the last time I ever talk about Fear and Hunger on this channel. It is not an immersive sim. I have no idea what kind of logic is being used to justify calling an RPG maker game with heavy RNG mechanics an immersive sim, but I do not agree with it. I'd also like to ask you all now to please respect that I personally want as little to do with this game as possible. I will not be making a video about Fear and Hunger or Termina. Please do not ask me. Please do not try and debate me into making this video because I have heard all your arguments and it is still a hard no. You're free to play the game and enjoy it on your own terms if you so desire, but please respect that it's just not for me. Head On and its direct sequel bundled into the game, Head On Bloodright, not an immersive sim, and the poster child of just because you added RPG elements to your boomer shooter does not make it an immersive sim. Pathologic 2, Borderline. There's a lot going on in this game, and some of it is very im-simmy, but not quite enough to where it's considered a full-blown im-sim. If anything, it's just pathologic. One of these days, I'm gonna do a better video on this game. Streets of Rogue, B-tier, a fun little game where you can combine roguelite elements with im-sim systems and have a great time. I am excited for the sequel next year. And finally, even though I forgot to write it in the script here, some people sometimes think this, I have actually heard this before, but Disco Elysium is not an immersive sim. You can't really do things outside of the role system. And um, it's got a lot of kitchen sink design. I'll give it that. But if that was the case that all you need to be an M sim was kitchen sink design, VTMB would be a full immersive sim. Uh, you guys get what I mean. And finally, welcome to the 2020s, the final major segment of this tier list and the time where things started to get a little weird, but we're doing okay for now, so let's just enjoy our time while we have it. Surprisingly, while we're only four years into this decade, it's tied with the last decade for most immersive sims in it with a bunch more on the way next year. I'll be doing that honorable mention segment because while I like doing these videos, I think it's only appropriate to do them once every two or three years maybe to avoid just remaking the same video over and over again. First up is Brigand Oaxaca, C tier. It just, it's an insane little game made by one dude. It's rough around the edges to say the least, but if you can get into it, you'll have a ball. Then we've got The Outer Worlds, which is a Bethesda RPG and therefore not an immersive sim. Yes, I know it's made by Obsidian alone, and I personally think their biggest fumble when making this game was going hard into the from the people that made Fallout New Vegas angle, because that's not what is being delivered in this game in the slightest. It's just a Bethesda RPG without the Bethesda backing. Next is Cyberpunk 2077, absolutely not an immersive sim. Frankly, it is also a Bethesda RPG. Yes, I know there have been massive overhauls to the game over the years and the DLC adds a ton of new stuff, but remember that we're judging things going by the base game alone. Hey Charles, have you heard of this cool game called Do not recite the deep magic to me, for I was there when it was released in early access. Cruelty Squad, the easiest S tier ranking in this list. All day, every day, it is very satisfying to see Cruelty Squad finally getting its due as I remember when this was just an insane looking game with a trailer floating around pandemic Twitter. I think I was the second channel to make a video when the game first dropped, only to be beaten by Boulder Punch who got his out about two weeks before mine, and I was pretty busy at the time, so more power to him. While I do worry about the normification of Cruelty Squad, I'm happy that people are finally picking up on the references I have been sneaking into videos for the last two years. Deathloop. 
B tier. This kind of feels like Arcane was just playing the hits after making enough games to have some hits. And while it's cool that it's got a little bit of everything going far back as arcs, it doesn't really add anything new and exciting, and color tiered loot is never something I want to see in an immersive sim. Filcher, it's a cool little game that's like a streamlined thief title. C tier. Abermore. Ultra Doo Doo tier. Abermore does have its merits though, as it's one of the few examples of a so bad it's good video game. Weird West. B tier. This is X-Arcane developers Wolfeye's first title, and it kind of reminds me of the early days at Arcane with Arcs and Dark Messiah, and how it's a weird game that does weird new things, except this time around the devs are much more experienced, so the end product is much better. If anything, I'd say this is a B tier bordering on A, but not quite crossing that line. Also, the, the first entire act of this game is free if you want to try it out. That's like 20 hours of gameplay if you really want to. Control all ego S tier, the finest in box stacking and crazy mechanics. This game has systems on systems on systems that all come together in a game where nothing is impossible. The game also has amazing level design and tons of replayability based on the merit that there is no one way to accomplish any task. If there is one game I recommend above all others for immersive sims, it's Control Alt Ego. Another newcomer to this list is Stay Out of the House. A tier, Puppet Combo made a spooky game with some spooky good imps and mechanics, and it works. Thick, solid, tight, keep us updated. Imprisoned Hyperion, C tier. It's a little rough around the edges, but not terrible. Also, there's a demo for the sequel that's coming out soon. The System Shock Remake. This might be shocking to some of you, but it's not an immersive sim. Most of the creature comforts added when translating this game from the 90s to the 2020s shaved off all the M sim elements. It's still a great game, you just can't cheese like you used to. Amnesia The Bunker, S tier. This was the most pleasant surprise I've had all year, and at $25, it is a steal. And they're still adding more stuff to this game. Baldur's Gate 3, A tier. Yes, I am spoiling my own video that I've been working on for a while now, with, but with all the systems that Baldur's Gate does, such a great job of translating from tabletop to your graphics card, there is plenty of emergent gameplay and kitchen sink design to call BG3 an M-Sim, and a fine one at that. Video coming sooner or later, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate right now, which frankly is not a bad thing at all for me. And finally for the 2020s, uh, so far, Legends of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Not an immersive sim. Just because there are times when it accidentally has elements of emerging gameplay does not mean that the whole game is an immersive sim. And that's all of them, at least all of the games that are fully released right now. Before we get into what's the worst game among the Ultra Doo Doo and who's the best of the S ranks, let's go over the honorable mentions, which are games that are coming out close to this video's release. First up, which is coming out quite literally less than two weeks from when this video is supposed to go live, is Blood West. Blood West is a stealthy shooter that has plenty of Imsim elements so that so long as you complete a task, it's fair game, and there is never no one way to get to the objective. Then there's Dead Eye Deep Fake Simulacrum, a mouthful to say, but a simplistic fun game with tons of cool systems to play around in, and some of the best hacking I've seen in an immersive sim. You heard me right, good, fun, engaging hacking in an immersive sim, or frankly any video game. It's still early access right now, but the game is well fleshed out, and I believe story complete if you want to give it a try. Shadows of Doubt is a game we covered earlier in the year when it first came to early access, and it's an amazing game and quite possibly the best detective simulator I've played. The the world is procedurally generated for each playthrough, but in no way sacrifices death with tons of emergent storytelling through the cases you solve. Another one that's worth your time, even though it's not fully out yet. Gloomwood. Okay, seriously, does anyone watching this video not know what Gloomwood is? Gloomwood dropped into early access roughly a year ago, and it's been steadily adding more stuff to the game since then. I actually kind of hesitated to put it in the honorable mentions because I wanted to showcase games that are expected to come out soon and not in the haha funny meme publishers ran into the ground so hard you're not allowed to put custom release dates on Steam anymore, but as in something we can reasonably expect to come out within the next year. I personally do not expect Gloomwood to come out next year, but I will be very very pleasantly surprised if it does. Fortune's Run is a boomer shooter M-Sim borderline game that actually does have M-Sim elements and not just slapping RPG mechanics into boomy shoot. I've been meaning to make a video on this for a hot minute now since it came out a few weeks ago, but it's been a pretty busy time for me lately. I'm hoping to have this video out by the end of the year. Parapedia, which no matter how I say it, I will still say it wrong. It's Polish Deus Ex, and while I was expecting this to be the year it dropped, uh, some stuff happened that I'm not gonna get into and just try to be patient with the game release. Streets of Rogue 2 is coming out next year, and it's more Streets of Rogue. Nice! Finally, since I gotta draw the line somewhere, 
Fallen Aces. It's a new Blood production though, so don't expect it anytime soon. I gotta say, while the initial demo didn't feel particularly imps in me, the developments I've been watching on Twitter are reassuring. Again though, it's a new Blood game, which means that the final release can come anywhere from next year to the next time Pluto makes a full rotation around the sun. Now, before we get into the best immersive sims, let's discern the worst. There's only three Ultra Doo Doo qualifiers, so this will be easy, and I really hope I do not have to expand this list the next time around. At third worst is Abermore. It's horribly broken, low fidelity at best, and blatantly unfinished, but it has redeeming qualities in that it's that funny kind of bad. Just don't expect to have fun playing it all by yourself. You need to like get a bunch of dudes together and like watch the game just fall apart. Second worst is the fourth. Bad, not even an immersive sim by some people's definitions, but not the worst merely because the number one immersive sim that is the worst exists. The worst immersive sim is Underworld Ascendant. It is quote unquote finished, despite a lot of stuff like the AI and the pathfinding just not working. It's jank, and even if we were to somehow remove all this jank, it's still just not fun in the slightest. It's a chore to level into skills. Weapons aren't fun. The quests that are procedurally generated can sometimes be impossible to do. Do not play this under any circumstances. And now for the hardest part of the video, at least for me, which is figuring out which is the best among the S rank immersive sims. And I gotta be honest here, all of these are absolutely worth your time. There are no losers on this list. Every one of these games is best in show in its own way. Seventh out of the seven is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which has fallen quite a bit from number one last time around, but it's been a really, really good couple of years for immersive sims, and I've grown to appreciate other immersive sims more. Six is Amnesia the Bunker, which I was not expecting to be here at all, but who oh boy, I am happy for this game's existence. Fifth is Typhon, also known as Prey 2017, the best successor to System Shock 2 we're gonna get, and one of the finest immersive sims around. It's really a shame about what Arcane's making these days. Fourth is Cruelty Squad, which I wish I could put it higher, but I know some folks will get very fresh in the comments if the next two games aren't in the top three. Cruelty Squad masterfully combines hardcore shooting with some of the best ability systems around for a game that goes harder than anyone thought a game like this ever could. I'm really hoping we get the merch soon. I want that hat. Third place is System Shock 2, a masterclass in not just immersive sims, but also gaming as a whole. I'm really looking forward to Night Dive's Enhanced Edition. Number two is Deus Ex. Yeah, arguably the immersive sim, and if it wasn't for number one, it'd be my goat. I'm not gonna say too much else here because everything about Deus Ex has already been said. And the number one immersive sim out of all 64 games I've just talked about is none other than Control-Alt-Ego. Control-Alt-Ego is immersive sims. It's a game built entirely around systems that are infinitely exploitable, which let you play the game in almost any conceivable way. I said this in my original video about Control Out Ego and I'll say it again. Years from now, as every hack video essayist and click farm masquerading as a news outlet talks about Control Alt Ego as some buried gem that just nobody knew about at the time and if only we cared earlier we'd be in a golden age of gaming, I'm gonna look right at them and say, where were all you shits when this game first came out? And that's it. We've done it. We've tiered and ranked all the immersive sims. I can't wait to see the utter forest fire in the comments. As always, if you'd like to help this channel out, you can do all the algorithm things. And if you're able and want to help me continue to make videos without sponsors or other undue influence, I do have my Patreon, where all pledges get early access to videos and 4K unobstructed cat clips. I also have the super thanks enabled if you aren't into recurring monthly contributions. If you can't do either of those or just don't want to, that's totally cool. I'm going to keep making these videos as best I can, and maybe one day with enough effort, I'll earn that pledge someday. In the meantime, let's sign off. Remember that no matter what you do, be it painting, drawing, writing, or anything else, what you do is not content. It is art. Content is a word that has been twisted to make a means to grind up all your stylings, your aspirations and skills, and make it into a gray slop meant for nothing more than to make a line go up. Your art in no way deserves that, and neither do you. Art is a reflection of you by the very nature of its creation, and no one deserves to be reduced into content. So get out there and fight for your art by fighting against the contentification of everything. Stay saucy, everyone. Look at this handsome lad with his new bow tie. Look at you. Got you a nice new collar. Not all frayed. Made for extra chonky boys. The other one was too, just... This one's purple. I want to see the purple. Curious boy with a saucy look. Behold, 
afoot with my cheapo shoes where the black stuff is just painted on so as soon as you scuff it it's white I don't know if it's dye or rubber or whatever it is got a side shot of that thick neck let me see the bow tie oh no it's banned inquisitive loaf <laughs> 